Okay, welcome everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm going to just ask if, if everyone on the call could uh, introduce themselves. I will start. I am Councilman Khalid, City of South Fulton. Uh, this development is on the backside of my district, District 6, which is Central Old National. I'll go next. I'm Ray Cunliffe uh, with the our applicant. We own the property and are the ones uh, we hired Michelle to help us with through the process and try to get the property rezoned as we proposed. I'm Nathan Mylombardo, Planning and Zoning Administrator for the City of South Fulton, and uh, just doing my best to help this through the process. Hi, I'm Dana Gray, Planner, City of South Fulton. Hi, I'm Marissa Jackson, Planner, City of South Fulton. I'm Christina Cummings, the Deputy Director for Community Development, Regulatory Affairs, City of South Fulton. This is Erwin Coleman. Uh, I work for the City Manager. I'm just sitting on the call for him. I've had multiple meetings um, with the community. Um, I actually did a um, on-site site visit with the community. Um, I've spoken with Miss Elaine, who was the person kind of spearheading that, and we discussed the inclusion of the traffic circle and we did provide a copy of the actual traffic study so that that could be circulated. Uh, for those who, are, who may not be completely familiar, this is where the project would be located. It is on uh, Camp Valley, uh, sort of connects Flat Shoals Road and Bethsaida. It, it, it runs perpendicular to Old National, sort of on, on the back of Old National. And so there is this blind curve here. There's been a lot of accidents. You can see the little sign here, which is where the original entrance was planned. The, the second concern was just that there weren't um, any specific amenities that were defined or committed to. And for this number of homes, there was some question about that. I also have just some questions about uh, the, the garages and the spacing. And so I, I will get to those, but I'm gonna turn it on over to you now, Ray, and, and, and you can show us the uh, updates that you've made to the plan. Okay, thank you. So here's the updated set. This is based on the, uh, you know, the discussion during the planning commission meeting last week. Um, and, you know, hearing what some of the, the community mentioned, and also the planning commission members. Uh, you know, I think the one of the big things was having kind of a community area to meet. And I think, you know, uh, one of the uh, members of the planning commission mentioned, you know, with kind of what's going on with coronavirus and stuff like that, you know, we want this to move in more of a kind of a, a natural amenities using the outdoors and the elements, but still having a place for the community to reach to celebrate successes. And uh, so hopefully, I'm not sure how it looks on everyone else's screen, but um, you know, one of the things we've done here is provided natural trails. Uh, I, can you see the cursor? Is it following on the, yes. okay. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, there's natural trails here connecting you know, rather than just being able to walk on sidewalk around the community, having natural trails over here, connecting here, um, and then, you know, coming around here and kind of building connectivity, you know, rather than uh, traditionally without these trails, someone, you know, who lived over in this section of the neighborhood would have to walk all the way around on sidewalks, whereas now there's, you know, connectivity through natural trails through the community. And I think the other thing we heard too were kind of pocket parks. So propose a pocket park over near the entrance. So, you know, as people come into the community, there's, you know, some sorts of sense of community as you come in. And then also um, in this section over here, this is a pocket park that's connected through trails as well. And then over here, um, you know, we have a parking facility for um, you know, this, the mail kiosk, and also, I don't know how well it's showing up on, on my screen, there's viewers, but this is kind of a, an example of the open air pavilion, you know, with kind of a, at the bottom here, you can see kind of a fire pit, 
or you know a fire feature for warmth in the winter um and then also kind of a, a i'll call it a bar but a table seating type surface where you know if there's food being served and such that it's you know it's more than just four posts and a roof you know it is more kind of a place where the community can hold events meetings parties whatever the case is um so i think that's one of the issues you brought up councilman khalid um and then again you brought up the traffic I'll go back a little bit in history. That plan that you showed was kind of our original attempt. And then we had a public participation meeting. And without question, the biggest concern that came up at that meeting was traffic. And I think someone even referred to this curve in the road as uh, like dead man's curve or something like that. So one of the things with this, um, the proposed traffic circle, and I think going back, um, I think our the traffic study proposed like didn't propose that this was needed so this is kind of above strengthening the report the traffic circles above what was proposed in the traffic study but one of the things this does is it does kind of straighten that curve or straighten so you know someone's not coming and curve into this blind campfire drive so this straightens it and the other thing it does is a traffic circle provides uh, traffic calming. So, you know, as people approach it, they're, they have to slow down, or I don't, I guess they don't have to, but to get through it safely, they should slow down. And so it'll provide some traffic calming to just slow down the speeds there. And it makes Campfire Drive a much safer intersection for people to come out. So let me just let me just stop you there uh, for people who may watch this recording late later. Uh, do you see? Do you all see my arrow on this? Maybe not. No, I think it's still on mine. Probably. Okay. Um, if you could just sort of highlight the the curve down from campfire into the traffic circle, it it looks like uh, from what I'm seeing is it actually deepens the curve somewhat so that the traffic circle is actually on your property and not on Camp Valley Drive. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Yeah. So the existing uh, Camp Valley Drive is right here. Right. You can see that. So that's the existing Camp Valley Drive. So yeah, the, the traffic circle has been proposed to be completely on our property. That, and that makes sense because there was some concern with the erosion on both sides of Camp, uh, Camp Valley that it might be difficult to build up a traffic circle there because of those erosion issues. And then lastly, uh, to just point out that the exit of Campfire Drive is now south of the entrance for this subdivision because I think that was some concern that the entrance was right across from Camp uh, Camp Fire Drive, but that now is no longer the case. Yeah, and so sure. since you brought up the erosion issues, this actually addresses um, in our studies of the property. There's right here at Camp Fire Drive. It appears that there's an undersized um, pipe that goes under the road, and so there's a lot of water that comes down here off Camp Road or Camp Valley. Um, and then, so that pipe's undersized, so it seems like their water backs up and then spills over the road and causes erosion on the other side of the road. So this will capture a lot of that water coming down the road and then divert it into the, into this creek. So we'll be solving that issue. And it seemed to this property right here, um, water comes down and kind of I'll say puddles a little bit here. So again, this water is going to be captured through this new, um, through new storm pipe, the new uh, storm system, and then bypass. So we're actually addressing two of the issues that you saw out there. That's awesome. I think Michelle, you wanted to chime in. Uh, um, yeah, one of the things we did send a copy of the proposal over to Clayton County. Um, as they are, I believe, in primary control for that road. Um, they have indicated 
that they are fine with the traffic circle. There were a couple of little tweaks that they wanted to make in the design. Um, the desire certainly is to smooth out what was a previously dangerous curve. Um, so I don't think that we're actually deepening the curve um, in, in terms of kind of almost the J shape that was there now. Um, when people come down Camp Valley, um, they will smoothly transition into the traffic circle, thereby kind of eliminating um, that dangerous curve that they had. I think that the staff with Clayton had mentioned something about um, the lanes and wanting um, us to, I don't know if it was widen the lanes or something, but they, they did mention that we could address that during um, the uh, land development design phase. Um, uh, if, if this project were to get approved. That's, that is awesome. Um, and I'm glad you brought that up for, for those of you all, who, those of you all who don't know, you can see it a little bit on the map. Camp Valley Road here is actually the dividing line between the city of South Fulton and Clayton County. So many of the, uh, many of the most vocal residents that I and Michelle and others have been meeting with have actually been Clayton County residents on the campfire side. So a lot of the traffic concerns on, on the, so currently all of this land is undeveloped, right? And on along Camp Valley Drive, um, this is my aid bill coming in, along Camp Valley Drive on the Fulton County side, which is the left side of the map and city of South Fulton, there are only about seven houses on Camp Valley Drive. Uh, so there are only about seven families that are on the city of South Fulton side of this road. However, and I'm going to talk about this a little later, there are many residents in the subdivision just behind uh, this. So further to the left, right along Morris Road that if you keep following that arrow further to the left of the map you come back to um, the old National Highway and the subdivisions of Heritage Park, Foxfire and uh, there's a there's a there's another Bigwood Trail there's another uh, uh, subdivision there that's um, and so residents have uh, been speaking to me about some city of South Fulton residents have been speaking to me about a, a, a set of issues that we'll address in a minute. First, let me say, I love the traffic circle. I love that it also um, will hopefully address some of the, the erosion problems that we have seen uh, firsthand out there. I do have a question about, as the traffic circle has moved onto the property, whether or not that traffic circle is now all in the city of South Fulton, and if that changes the boundaries between Clayton County and the city of South Fulton in any way. So I, I, would, I, can I would say that, that, that the traffic circle is fully within the city of South Fulton. Um, and so, you know, no different, I would say to, the fact that we were going to have, you know, public streets that would have been coming out onto Camp Valley, to me, this is all just another public street um, that's within the city of South Fulton. And, and so now, I don't know if it changes any boundary lines. It just means that those roads become a part of your network. And then, and then go ahead, Ray. You had something. Yeah, I was going to say no. The the boundary line between. Uh, Fulton County and Clayton County or City of South Fulton, that, this won't change it at all. Awesome. Uh, the other question I have, and then this is, again, more research from my legislative specialists, as well as uh, some of the planning and zoning folks that are on the call, the CDRA folks that are on the call, is we, so we currently have an, have an ordinance that prohibits, um, that prohibits um, uh, 18-wheeler trucks, right, from driving down the street like this although since this since some portion or maybe most of the uh, camp valley drive is in the purview of clayton county i'm not sure what provisions they have around that and is it 
is it possible that 18 wheelers or, or some large trucks might be coming down this road? And if so, is the traffic circle large enough to accommodate them? And, I'm, I, and I don't know if in your talks with Clayton County, if you addressed whatever kinds of traffic they allow down this road and whether this traffic circle will meet all of those uh, requirements. Um, having had some conversation uh, with the engineers, I believe that the traffic circle would accommodate um, large um, trucks coming through. Um, I would be surprised if that were a truck route. Um, Camp Valley was a truck route, um, but we certainly can ask that question uh, to Clayton County, but I, I find that unlikely that it is a truck route. Right. Oh yeah, I would be completely surprised as well. I do know that trucks sometimes go down uh, Bethsaida and uh, Flatshore, so I don't know if like, they might use it as a, as a detour for whatever reason. There will be signs though um, approaching both, approaching the traffic circle in both directions, there will be signs though that, that let people know that there is this traffic circle there. Is that correct? Um, we can certainly place those. We would have to ask transportation um, to, to allow that, but I don't see why they wouldn't. And, um, you know, the reality is there will always be some you know, tractor trailers that may come through, particularly if, say, somebody's moving in uh, with a Mayflower or one of the large um, moving companies, uh, they may, you know, have a need to have a large truck come through, but the traffic circle would be able to accommodate that traffic, but we can go back to the engineer just to reconfirm um, that it is wide enough, but um, that is my understanding. That would be awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't want anybody to get stuck or to tear up the circle. I do know that uh, Clayton County buses uh, do come down that road. And now Fulton County buses would also have to come down that road because there's no way, there's no other way to access this subdivision. I know we had talked about uh, possibly having an egress on to Morris Road going back to Old National. I understand that that is not possible. So therefore any, any school age children who are in this subdivision would be picked up by Fulton County buses because this is in Fulton County. And so they would be coming through there. As Correct. Well. Yeah, and typically, as a side note, these, you know, the, the inner circle of the traffic circle, as you can kind of see here, typically there, you know, there's pavers put on the inside so that when a truck, you know, if they do take the corner a little tight, they're driving over the, you know, concrete here rather than, you know, uh, tearing up the sod or whatever's in the center. I mean, I mean, honestly, you know, somebody is going to rent a U-Haul that's too big for them to handle one, you know, one of those days too. So it, it's inevitable that something gets driven over, but it seems that this is, you know, taken into consideration pretty thoroughly. Yeah. And would, and would the maintenance of this traffic circle fall on the city or fall on the developers and the HOA? If, if that traffic circle was torn up in that sort of way, who would pay for the repairs? So I would assume if it's public right of way, it would be the, the county. Um, I don't know whether or not there could be some adoption of the landscaping in the center of the of the circle by the HOA to make sure that it, you know it stays nice because it is, in a sense, almost kind of like a part of the subdivision. But otherwise, I would assume it would be the city. But. So you would be deeding this land, even though it, like it appears to be on the developer's property. You would actually be deeding all of that right of way back to the city. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All the roads. So you know, currently the properties, you know, the property lines here. But eventually the property line will just kind of follow, you know, the outline of this and this will all become, you know, basically the community will start here and here at these two intersections that come into the community. Awesome. All right. So let's talk amenities. I love the walking trails. I assume that there are sidewalks on both sides of all of the streets. 
I yeah, I believe the county. I think the. Uh, I think the cities. And may, someone from staff might correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the sidewalk requirement is on both sides where there's on like in front of um, homes, but then on one side when it's not fronting a home. So I think you can see here the sidewalk on this side here and this side, but then it continues just on one side here and doesn't have two sides on this side. So I, I, don't I would know. ask because I see that there is this walking trail here. I would ask that um, the sidewalk would be on both sides just so that people who are walking on the walking trail, when they come off the walking trail, they have somewhere safe to continue walking just for the connectivity through this subdivision. Okay. And uh, just to ask the question, so would you want it all the way continuously down or to kind of pick up here and feed into the, the park? So yeah, I, I would think way. all the way continuously down wherever there is a, wherever there is a, an exit from the walking trail, we want them to be able to exit from the walking trail back onto the sidewalk. Okay. Um, next, I do want to talk about this amenities area. So it looks like this is other than this, other than these pocket parks and how many pocket parks have, do you have here? Is it two? Yeah, well, we have one proposed here. And then one proposed over here as well. Yeah, so two currently. That's awesome. And then there is this open air pavilion, which is the gathering area. That's what you're showing highlighted here. Yeah, correct. And you can see it. I don't know if you can see if it's, uh, if you can see it in the bottom right hand corner or if it's, I don't know if you can see this example here. I'll, let me see if I can, oops. Yes. I so this is kind of what's proposed for the open, the pavilion area, something similar to this. And that's beautiful. If you could uh, maybe make it a little bit smaller so we can see, or just scroll over so that we can see the parking area that's connected to it. How many parking spaces do you have there for that amenity? So there's eight plus a um, ADA parking facility. Okay. And, and so this is, while I love that, here is one of the concerns that I have had as a, as a councilman. In a lot of these, um, in a lot of these new subdivisions, there comes a point where the developer turns the development over to the HOA. Yeah. And then the HOA begins meeting and having regular meetings. There is, when there is no building for them to hold those meetings in, they're forced to find a local church or a, a park. And, and so many of our, many of our churches and parks are overwhelmed with requests for people, for HOAs to hold meetings because they have no clubhouse or no club room to hold meetings in. And when there is a meeting, there is no place for people to park, even though the majority of people are going to probably be walking from their houses. My concern is that eight spaces may not be enough and that the outdoor amenity is maybe only usable about six months out of the year. You know, we have inclement weather here. Uh, we do have a winter here. We do have lots of rain. And so my concern is where would, where, and there are 151 homes. Is that where we're at now? Yeah, so there's, Proposed 155, 155 units. And so when these people gather to have an HOA meeting, if 100 people come out for an HOA meeting, where do they meet and where do they park? Yeah. We'll tell them to have a Zoom meeting. 
Yes, because you know, all the beast. Um, but okay. uh, obviously, they can't all park in those eight spaces. Um, and so I, I would think that that would require us to go back and kind of rethink um, that that space. Um, so is, there, are, is there is there any the possibility? And I'm not asking for like a pool or tennis courts or all of that. But is there any possibility to have a clubhouse with a meeting room that would at least fit 50 people? We know that everyone doesn't come to HOA meetings. But if you have 155 homes, I don't think that it's unreasonable that 50 or so of those people would come to a meeting. Is, is it possible to create a, a space on this property where they can meet? Because there is no, especially because there isn't access to Old National, they're, they're kind of secluded on the back side of our city. We have no parks or facilities that they could even meet in uh, within a half mile of this development. Yeah, so that's uh, good feedback. Why don't we kind of go to the drawing board on that and come up with a, a proposal on that? that we can share with you. I would, I would, I would love to see that. Um, and then lastly is, is a concern about the garages. And feel free to chime in, Christina or Dana, anybody in CDRA. Um, I am looking at revising or, or amending our subdivision regulations, which really wouldn't, uh, you know, you all would be grandfathered into the regulations that we have now. But uh, some of these homes are four bedroom homes. and I, it's my understanding that some of the townhomes have one car garages. And so my concern is if you have a four bedroom home, if you have a husband and a wife, one of them is parking outside if there's a one car garage. If there's anyone else with a car in that home, they end up parking either on the street or in the yard, which isn't always uh, the most desirable or, or, or pleasant looking. So how many of these homes have these one car garages? Um, so I'm going to say it's tough to say. Typically the, the end units here proposed are a little bit wider. So I think the end units would have two car. And then the interior ones would have either a combination of one or two garages. So, um, uh, how many bedrooms are in these interior ones that might have one car garages? I believe they're all, you know, to be honest with you, right now we don't have a builder, um, you know, in tow that's ready to purchase it, purchase it, to close on it. But I would expect that they would be two to three bedroom townhomes. On the interior? Any four bedroom townhomes or will those all be on the exterior if they're working? Yeah I think they would be exterior but I think probably four bedrooms would be typically more for the single family homes. And would all of those have two car garages? Yes all the single family detached would have two car garages. And so tell One, me how I, I, I will admit I'm, I'm always transparent. I'm a new councilman. Yeah. It sounds like this is being proposed on spec and then a develop a, a, a builder would come in and say, yes, I want to do this project. How do they negotiate who decides how many bedrooms and how many um, garages are in what is finally developed? So, well, so I guess part of it's through zoning. Like one of the conditions we proposed is all the single family detached have two car garages and then the townhomes all have a minimum of one car garage so that we don't end up with units that have zero garages. Like the, I, you know, I think there are some communities that have zero. So, um, you know, in terms of bedroom, I, I, go ahead, Michelle. I was going to say, I, w I would think that it would be more than reasonable um, that I, I, I find it highly unlikely that you're going to have any four bedroom units. So you're probably talking about three bedroom units on the townhomes um, at most um, because 
usually they try to do at least one bonus room for like office space um, and not necessarily always, um, you know, three adults with cars. Um, so if we had a minimum of one bedroom, if there's more, we could, you know, craft a condition that if there's more than three bedrooms in the townhome, that it would have to have two car garage um, could be an option. Okay, I would I would love to I would love to see that condition and then because the, I, I would then ask when a builder comes in, how obligated are they to provide any two car garages in the townhome area? Like how obligated are they to, to stick to what we are saying? They, they technically would not be any, there would be no obligation unless they had four bedrooms or more. I can say I find it highly unlikely that there's gonna be any four bedroom townhomes. So we would be looking at primarily one bedroom, one, one car garages for um, the townhome product. I don't know if um, we would feel comfortable saying that there had to be some mixture of one and twos um, I would say my experience has been that most of the townhome products are one bedroom. It's kind of almost more rare to have the two bedroom uh, townhome product. Um, one alternative may be if we're going to provide a space, this clubhouse, that that may be also a location for guest parking and kind of overflow parking. Right. I think that that might be, uh, and so that's sort of, we're looking at this amenities on the, on the east side of the townhome development. I think that it might also, and I hate to take away spaces. I, I understand that there's, there's math to this, but I, I think on the left, on the left side, Ray, if you could, uh, um, maybe move your cursor, yes, around this left side of the curb. I think it would also be advisable to put some additional parking spaces there so that uh, people who do have extra cars or who have guests or visitors are not forced to park in the streets. Because I know that these streets and a lot of these new subdivisions are not the widest. And you know, if you have people park on one side, it's hard to, uh, to get down the streets. Christina, would you please chime in as a, as a member of our um, CDRA department? Well, actually I would defer to Nathan because he actually manages that, um, he manages all of the zoning for the oh. city. Oh, I mean, I have, I have some comments on the point. What specific question here do you want me to provide an answer to, to answer other, oh. than, other than overall thought, of, thought on parking? Just, I, just your thoughts on how we, you know how we make sure in these in these townhomes where there might be one yeah. car you know there may be more cars than there are drivers yeah. in their garages like how do we keep because as you know we have this we do have this regulation that says that there that, that no car should be on the street between uh right a.m and 6 a.m so that we have uh ingress and egress for emergency vehicles if we have these more narrow streets what sort of parking solutions would you suggest to make sure that the streets remain clear? Right. I mean, the, the, the issue here is ultimately regulating human behavior, which I, I hate to just kind of punt on it like that. But, right. you know, in terms of design for townhomes, you could always have a deep garage instead of a wide garage to have two, you know, one in front instead of uh, side by side. That obviously takes up interior space. That's, that's a, a trade off there. Um, you know, I don't know how much space there is without seeing any buildings as opposed to could you maybe have a little bit more of a driveway space outside to allow for parking in a driveway. Obviously, if someone's having a, a dinner party and they're having 10 people over, there's going to be a problem no matter what we think about ahead of time, but that's not going to be happening on a daily basis. Right. Um, and then, you know, the trade-off is too, there's only so much land to put, you know, a wider street or setbacks or things like that to have more available space. So it's kind of a cost benefit analysis kind of things. And at the same time, you know, being that this is gonna be uh, a private development and, and be, you know, have an HOA in force, there's gonna be some, some degree of self-regulation um, internally with an HOA uh, maintaining uh, 
uh, what's I can't think of the word I'm looking for. Um, you know, calmness among its among its residents among the behaviors in there. So, so, so let me ask the, 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 all of you: it, Would it? I've been in HOAs, uh, Madison places, uh, which is which is uh, adjacent to this um, on our national uh, comes to mind. They only allow parking on one side of the street, and they have signs that say there's like no parking on this side of the street. Is is that a city thing or is that an HOA? If they are public streets, then that would be a city thing. Right. Um, if they're private streets, then that would be a community thing. I will say this, and what's interesting, you know, our streets are the width that are um, allowed and permitted by the city. And the, you know, we're not, you know, kind of um, interpreting our own width. Um, we're providing what is required. So I believe that the width requirement is um, 50, uh, a 50 foot right of way with uh, I think two driving lanes at 12, right. probably 12 feet. So, um, you know, standard has been that there's no, you know, parking allowed as you indicated on the street in the, in the evenings, which is fine. There will be a pad in front. Um, one of the things that I know you all are extremely sensitive on is whether or not the car overhangs uh, into the drive and so into the public right of way. And so there will be sufficient space for a car in the interior and I believe a car in front so that there will be, you know, a car that car could park on the pad. So if there's two cars in that home, which is kind of the assumption on a townhome that you may have a second car so that one's in the garage and one's on the pad. Um, and that gets that other car off the street at night. Um, any guests, however, would have to park um, either on the street up until whatever the time is that they have to be gone, um, or they would have to park around in the um, uh, parking spaces that would be provided um, within the community. That's awesome. Ray, could you scroll over to the left to just see that, that left side of that curve of where the townhomes are again? And I, and I wanted to ask, in these green, yes, in these green spaces that are on both sides of the road, is there, is there space for a parking pad there? I, 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 without taking away from the townhomes that are already there, it looks like there is some green space that maybe could be used, particularly on the, on the left side towards the walking trail that we might be able to put parking spaces there. The one thing I'll say about this is this is the 75 foot impervious buffer. Got you. So without a variance to the city's, oops, without a variance to the city's um, buffer, you know, we can't get into this buffer, but um, Nathan or I guess someone well, let me, in the city, can we put- I'm not, I'm not looking, so, sorry to interrupt Ray, but let me ask you this, is that within the last, hundred foot um, setback component because the first 75 we're definitely out of. Then there's the last 25, which I believe, Nathan, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is a um, kind of a setback. Um, I don't know if there would be a problem having impervious surface in that area or not. So I knew that's what the, where this was headed. Yeah have a definitive answer this second on that but that is a really interesting way to, to say you know could we have uh an, an impervious parking service instead of asphalt and I, i'm not sure that that, that i want to that i know or can speak to that this second but that is definitely a, a, a proposal that it, that is worth um having a discussion about well and what i was going to suggest too so the city i know you can't drive a car and typically they don't want to have where you take a left and park kind of you know perpendicularly right but sometimes if you have on-street parking that are parallel parking spots yeah um, oh yeah I mean you see you yeah, see that in a lot of apartment complexes where they have the streets and then the street parking that are they're all parallel spots like that my, my question or, or challenge rather is you know do those become permanent parking for residents do they become you know just over you know I, I guess the intent of this is not just have cars everywhere all the time um, and I, you know, I don't know that that's necessarily my, a, 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 a problem or just an opinion. Um, it just, I guess, something to think about with, with that. You know, I, I, I wouldn't want to have 
you know, if someone just wanted to have a bunch of cars, uh, to own a bunch of cars, is that reasonable to allow space for that only in the public parking? Well, I will tell you. So I live, um, I live probably about a mile from, from here, and I live in a, con in a condo complex, which has become like a lot of renters. And we have had that problem where mm -hmm. we actually did have these parking pads with extra spaces. They are very helpful for when people are having guests in companies, right? Because it keeps it keeps the road clear. Right. We did have um, we did have an occasion where someone, one of the uh, residents, was repairing cars, and so they started using it as a you know a car repair place. And I think that goes back to your 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 point about regulating human behavior. That will be up right the uh, the HOA to regulate, which they did. They you know, they, they cut down on that. But I, I am always, um, I always worry about taking away amenities for the whole just because you have one or two people that don't follow the rules. So I think that, sure. I think that if, if you thought that it was okay, um, I would love to see a, var a variance if needed. Um, maybe if we do yeah. perpendicular parking, no variance would be needed, but I would love to see a variance uh, if, if needed to just create that that additional parking because as you can see that this is these 59 homes that's a that's a lot of home Th those are a lot yeah. of homes and not a lot of spaces I'm, I mean I, I objectively love the idea of you know impervious surfaces on parking lots just as a as a practice anyway because that's better for the environment now whether or not that this that's been specifically proposed I'm not sure I'd have to you know I mean, if it was if I could wave my hand and do it, I'd say sure. Let's do that. Do that right now because it's it's a good idea. Um, I'm not sure that anyone's asked that question before or what the law what the laws are in detail. But I can do some homework on that because that's not that's not a that's that's a worthwhile uh, endeavor there. So in, well, in Nathan, well, to the extent to the extent that we would need a variance because we can do concurrent variances, I would say that our best option would be to add that as a concurrent variance. It may require us kind of you know the question is do we have to go back through the process but the the concurrent variance to allow for the parking in that area certainly would be preferable than having to go to the bca um to right. get it if we didn't have to i agree with that well and nathan as currently shown though and you know we'll get this plan updated but you know we still do have uh so what's the math here we have 24 feet so 12 feet of right away here mm -hmm. on the side here uh so yeah so that's 12 or it's actually 10 feet from the back of curb from the edge of right away so we can you know put in some parallel propose some parallel parking spots up you know maybe to the pocket park around this corner yeah and keep that within the 50 foot proposed right away yeah and i would send the, i would i would draw that up and send it over we can have bennett look at it um, but I, it's not, it's, you know, it's definitely a worthwhile idea here to do that. I love this. I'm so, look at us coming up with solutions. Um, Christina, <laughs> just as a matter of protocol, would, would they be able to keep the same schedule with a concurrent variance or would that change? Uh, would they have to go back through the process again? That's why we're recommending the, the concurrent variance to keep them on their current schedule. Right. The question is, can we just get everything, um, get the documents done and get everyone to agree that this is, you know, uh, above board in time. That's and but this this isn't going to wouldn't go to the council until we got a few weeks on that. So I, I don't see that we couldn't do that. Right. I believe our, our next uh, zoning hearing is actually October 27th. Yeah, yeah we've got mm -hmm. like a, a whole month. Yes. And then I was going to say matter of you know, um, when it's actually on the, the council agenda, council member, if this is something that you want to put forward, you have privilege to be able to introduce papers um, on your behalf since this is in your district. So that that's another, we have the regular kind of procedural staff protocol, but then you can always introduce something as a personal paper. And, and, and explain that to me, personal paper. So there's two ways that legislation typically follows or gets passed as you have a normal legislative process. 
or you can introduce an item as kind of a personal paper as a council person. So like you can bring it forward um, and, and, and sponsor that item as the council person. I would be, I would be very interested in doing that. And I want you all to know, like I am, you all have, you all have been over backwards to work with our community that has had a lot of concerns. And so I do, I think that that would be a good show of support. And I, I think if we can get all of these changes in that we're talking about today, I think that the community will be more welcoming of this project as well. A closing thought, just in the, the spirit of sustainability, I understand that we spent a lot of the conversation talking about parking, but I think in the future, it would be amazing to come up as a city with some kind of packages that offer like density bonuses and get people actually out of their cars and start designing our community so that they are more walkable. So I, I just think that this is a very forward looking and forward thinking project that could possibly serve as kind of a um, baseline for some a future development, but doing it in the spirit of um, having things peacefully coexist with nature.